right. Welcome, everybody. How's everyone doing? Happy Wednesday, and welcome to Creators Live. Uh, this is our 30th show, I believe. Um, and, uh, you know, it, and I'm happy to, uh, to uh, be the one hosting it this week. Uh, again, those of you that don't know me, I'm Serafin Aguirre. I'm the tech service manager here at Omniprint International. And this handsome fellow next to me, some of you guys have seen him uh, maybe in some of our videos and also uh, in our website. Uh, this is Travis from uh, Marsuno. Uh, he's uh, here today uh, to go over some of the uh, basic maintenance that we normally do with some of our, uh, what we, we basically do with customers. Uh, but for them, it's a little different than, uh, than a normal uh, usage on, on the machine, right? Uh, they, they're a large, larger company and they use the machine a uh, bit more than the norm. Uh, so we do go... Uh, uh, over a different uh, way of um, keeping up with the, the machine and maintaining it. So I'll be asking them a few questions about how uh, they maintain some of the, the basic questions that some of the customers that just get started with DTG or even customers that have been with us uh, for a long time, you know, they, they always want to know what are other, uh, uh, what is the other competition doing when it comes to, you know, maintenance or upkeep on, on their, their, uh, their printers. Uh, so first, you know, welcome, Travis. If uh, you can give us a little bit of background on uh, Marsuno, I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Well, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me today. Uh, like Seraphin said, I'm Travis uh, Lefebvre. I'm the operations manager over at Marsuno Creative, actually just down the street uh, from here at Omniprint in Costa Mesa. Um, we're one of the largest DTG uh, printers on the West Coast here in California. Um, I started with the company eight years ago. And uh, about a year after that, we got our first uh, 330TX from Omniprint, and that was just my show to run it. So I uh, started with the, you know, the Wagner hand sprayer and yeah. uh, you know, had a really <laughs> ghetto operation set up with a heat press on a filing cabinet and a printer in a back office. And nice. uh, so we started that, learned the ropes, and uh, you know, I'm sure like a lot of you guys was calling Omniprint every day, <laughs> asking what this light does and why this button does. And, um, and now we just moved into our, our largest facility yet. Uh, we just moved into a, a 21,000 square foot warehouse. Uh, like I said, just down the street from here, uh, we now have 12 free jet printers, um, as well as the Cheetah uh, industrial machine as well. Um, and we're just, just pumping it out. So it's been exciting watching it grow from, you know, like I said, just me running this one machine to to gradually adding more and more machines, uh, bringing on more staff, scaling our operation further, and you know, always just trying to push things further. That is amazing. You know, when when I hear uh, things like like this, you know, one machine, little, you know, having the the pretreatment with a spray gun and trying to learn that, you know, and then we we see and we we come like he like Travis said, we we go over to his facility because right down the street and and. Uh, you know, they just moved into a huge uh, office and you walk in there and, you know, it's night and day. You know, they think the area you guys used to work on was probably no bigger than the area that we're in. Yeah, now, right? smaller than this room for sure. Uh, that's that's amazing. It, it, uh, it, it, it's awesome. So uh, I'll be asking Travis a few questions and I'm sure some of you guys might have a few questions of your own. So after as, as he ex uh, explains or, or goes into detail on how uh, they maintain their machines and what they use and what they've seen works for him uh, and them, the, all their, their different uh, uh, upkeep. I will uh, maybe open it up for some questions and, and uh, I'd like to see some of your guys' faces so you guys can uh, turn on your cameras and, and, and join us. So uh, one, one of the questions is uh, obviously that we get is uh, how long do you run your machine daily? Uh, so currently we're running our machines about 16 hours a day. Um, our morning print shift starts at 6 a.m. and then our night shift uh, ends at 11 p.m. But usually the last kind of hour is closed down maintenance and stuff like that. Wow. Um, so we're running in about 16 hours a day, Monday through Friday. And then currently we're also running like a single shift on Saturdays as well. But we are heading into the, the Black Friday and holiday season. So we may need to extend that to Sundays as well. So we might be running seven days a week uh, and, and expanding shifts as well. Wow, that's awesome. You know? I'm sure a lot of you guys out there, you know, run the machine a lot more than 
know, six hours. And so when, when I hear, you know, 16 hours, right, of the machine just constantly flowing, you know, it makes you wonder is how do, how's our weekly, how's our daily, how's our monthly maintenance? Uh, obviously for, uh, for Marsuno, it's a lot different than what we uh, start our customers out with, right? Our weekly and monthly maintenance, uh, the ink, the, the, the encoder strip, all that good stuff, which we'll get into and, and Travis will, uh, will kind of get into that a little bit more. Um, so how many shirts would you say uh, your, each printer prints uh, daily? So I think when you kind of average it out, we're running around 60 to 80 shirts per machine. Um, so on a day-to-day -day production basis with all the free jets and cheetah running, we're doing around uh, 12 to 1400 shirts um, in a day across that. So when you average it up to the machines, it works out to be um, be about that 60 to 80 per machine per day. Yeah. Wow, that, that's that's amazing. You know, 60 to 80 80 prints. You know, that's uh, that's quite a bit, right? But you are running two shifts and, and uh, um, you know 16 hours. So, um, so I guess now this is where I would like to get into the the maintenance part, right? For sure. And, yeah. and the the upkeep. So after you know, you guys do multiple prints. I've seen you guys go as small as uh, you know, little uh, logos on the chest to full body prints and mm -hmm. then the front, the back, some sleeves, you know, you guys do everything. Um, it, because of how you run it, 16 hours, right? Mm -hmm. And constantly running uh, and, and you got two shifts. Um, how often would you say you do uh, head cleaning or, or what we would normally call it daily uh, shutdown process. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think like kind of to elaborate on that a little further, I'd say like 80% of what we run is dark shirts. So we're using other, you know, black or dark environments. Um, and for our clothing brands, most of the designs we do are pretty large. Like we're at our full 12 inch width. We're you know, usually around 15 inches long. So the prints are very thirsty on the, the white inks and just inks in general. Um, which can be really hard on the on the heads and everything as, as you guys know um, but it's been great partnering with Omni to really look at our day-to-day -day systems and figure out where can we add these little extra maintenance pieces or where we might need to increase the maintenance to make sure that everything's running tip-top because we don't want to have machines down all the time all day um, or at the same time compromise our quality uh, either because the only way we can continue to grow our business is if we continue uh, you know, keeping the same standards of quality. Of um, so in terms of the, the head cleanings and stuff, uh, we kind of go based on um, like milestones, I guess. Um, so we have our, our opening procedures, same as you guys would do uh, in the mornings. So first thing when we come in, uh, the printers will do, you know, they'll wipe down all the exterior surfaces of the machine, interior as well. Um, we'll be stirring our white ink bottles, do our refills, um, cleaning inside the the, the pump and capping unit, making sure the wiper blade is nice and clean, uh, making sure the underside of the print head around the trims is, is spotless as well so that we're setting ourselves up from the jump with a clean machine that's ready to go. Um, honestly, that's not something we always did, yeah. uh, but <laughs> I can say truthfully that the better our maintenance has got, the, the better our quality has gotten, the more consistent it's been, um, and the less downtime we have as well. So the opening procedures, for sure, super important. And then we basically repeat that uh, when our operators take their lunch break. So usually after about four hours or okay. so, um, when they go on lunch, it's like a 30 minute break. So we're putting either super nozzle cleaner or super cleaner in the capping station. So that way when the machine's not in use, that that cleaner's breaking down any ink on the bottom of the head. And then when they come back uh, from their lunch, basically repeating those opening procedures. So doing our power down, two feedings, nozzle check, make sure we're good. Um, and then same thing when the second shift comes in, they're doing that process all over again, same thing in their lunch as well. So at least four times a day. Okay. Um, but we also have, you know, both our operators overseeing their quality and, you know, if they see prints start to get the lines in them because a color is dropping out sure. or if our production managers are noticing, um, same thing when they're coming out, they're calling out it as well. <clears throat> so, you know, as I'm sure you guys are seeing, depending on the prints you're running, how much ink it's using, you might see you need to do more nozzle, uh, more head cleanings and nozzle checks than that. Um, but I find like in with us for now, sticking to that, like basically a minimum four or like kind of every four hours is enough to keep things keep things running pretty smooth. 
and you know our warehouse conditions are not ideal compared to you know when we first started uh, and we were in sure. a, a second floor office it was air conditioned there wasn't dust you know now we're in a big warehouse with other production so there's lots of dust um, it's hot. Yeah. Uh, so even with that, like I find the machines are holding up well with those kind of minimum four checkpoints. And then from there, uh, we're also just, again, kind of as needed, making those adjustments. Throughout sure. The day. So, yeah. So uh, obviously the, uh, those of you that have gone through our Omni Academy or have had one on one trainings or have obviously read through our 76 page or 74 page manual and you look at your daily, your weekly, your monthly uh, it's not what what Travis is and his team is doing, right? Um, because it's different, right? It's a starting point what we give you, and then it depends on how you use a machine and how much you run it, how much your uh, um, how many prints, how big the prints are, all that good stuff. So it, you know to to hear that the machines are running great and being able to get you know 1,200, 1,400 prints daily. Uh, and making sure that his his uh, machines are up, uh, uh, I guess up to code, mm-hmm. right? Um, it 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 it, uh, it really it really does change, right? The maintenance, uh, like Travis uh, mentioned, does does change. Um, one one of the things I also wanted to ask you is, you know, it, and it's something that I think we we may overlook it because of the fact that you know it's. We, we know that we have the bulking system, right? Which saves mm-hmm. everybody money because of cartridges, yeah. all that good stuff. So how, when do you notice that it's time to, how far down, I guess, would you, would you say you would let your ink bottles go before you say, okay, it's time to fill them up or what you tell your team, it's time to let you fill them up. Yeah, for sure. So again, like kind of same thing. We want to start every day with the best possible roadmap to success. So for us, that means... Uh, the start of each shift will fill the ink bottles to like that kind of metal trim line on the back. Nice. Um, so we find like if we're doing that twice a day, that regardless of how fast one of our operators is printing, we don't usually go through more ink than that. Um, that said, we try obviously not to overfill the bottles so that they're not backing up in sure. the lines um, or let them run too far down where if we're getting sediment to build up at the bottom, that it's not pulling, pulling that up. Right. So I guess like we try to always keep like at least you know, an inch or so of ink in the bottles um, and then just checking kind of every, the start of every shift and topping it up to that level. Right. That way it, we have a good amount of ink in there. We can still do a good swirl in the bottles um, but, uh, without overfilling it and uh, yeah, keep yeah. things, keep things flowing well. So it's, you know, in, in Travis, you know, he talks about the swirling, right? So it's, it's important that, you know, that we, 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 remove that that white ink around for even sure, though yeah. he's running at 16 hours a day right it's still down for eight hours and as we all know white ink it, it settles so you want to make sure that uh, that you swirl it right so that it doesn't settle down like he mentioned uh, it can pull uh, uh, some of that ink or it can go backwards if you don't have enough ink in the back of the bottle so it, it's uh, it, it one of those things that you always have to make sure that you keep an eye out. You know, that's why that little window in the back of the bracket is there. Mm-hmm. Keep you guys uh, from noticing, you know, once it gets about halfway of that window, you want to make sure you start to refill it. And it makes uh, a, a huge difference when you keep your ink levels up to make sure that it, it's always constantly uh, running at top top notch. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll open it up to see if anybody has any questions so far. Um, I know I got a couple additional questions that I'm, I'm, I'll be asking Travis, but I'd like to see if any of you guys have any questions for Travis or myself that we can uh, answer for you guys while, while uh, we get going here, get, get the second half of the, the, the maintenance part going, right? Mm-hmm. So if any of you guys have any questions, please, you can, you're free to put them on the chat or you can unmute yourself and, and jump right in. Can I have a question, please? Yeah. Hey, this is Terry from Five Star on Apparel. So hey, Eric. I don't. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I don't good. do nearly the production that uh, that was just described, but I'm I'm printing three to four days a week, mm-hmm. and I'm still unclear about how often or when I need to use the super nozzle cleaner. I mean, I do routine maintenance, and I've I've had clean prints, um, but I haven't really had too many issues. Do things here and there, but. Um, I'm still not quite sure, like how often 
uh, I need to use or when I need to use a super nozzle cleaner. Okay. So the, the, the super nozzle cleaner, uh, that one is mainly used for uh, emergencies, right? Like if you had a head strike or if you, you, your, your, uh, your, your ink settled and you have hard ink kind of going in the bottom. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't, you, you don't, it, it doesn't benefit you from using it once in a while. But we, uh, we normally don't use the super nozzle cleaner. Uh, unless you are keeping some type of production where you know you want to make sure that you keep your uh, your ink uh, kind of nice and wet, right? Um, Travis, so for you, do you do you catch yourself putting super nozzle cleaner in your head to wet cap it for a day or so? Yeah, um, and we've kind of gone back and forth with with Omni a bit on this to find what's best for our machines. Ultimately, we use almost super nozzle cleaner exclusively um, because it is more concentrated it does do a better job of breaking down the ink so at night with the production that we're doing um, we're using the super nozzle cleaner to help break that down um, we have certainly received advice before that it can be i guess too strong sometimes sure. to leave it sitting like for days or weeks if if you're uh you know if you're at a volume level where your machine might be off for several days um, but it is, it is really effective. I think kind of maybe more importantly than which cleaner you're using is how clean your, your pump and wet cap is. Um, so making sure that, you know, when you're doing your kind of closing procedures with your machines, um, what we do is we'll run like a couple of syringes of distilled water through the pump first so that those sponges are nice and clean. So that way, when we put in, whether it's the super nozzle cleaner or the super cleaner, um, that it is the cleaner and not just a bunch of old ink sitting in there. Right. Um, so I find that that is as much or more important than the cleaner itself. Um, but for us, like we're using this super nozzle cleaner every day. Um, it is, like I said, more concentrated and also more expensive than the super cleaner. So I think like day to day wise, or if you're like operating for a few hours and you're going to cap it for a bit and then come back to it later, like the normal super cleaner would be more than fine for that too. Um, so it does depend kind of on the circumstance, also like what your operating conditions are in. You know, if you're in a really temperature controlled environment, um, dust control and stuff too, and you're not getting as much issues as we have with fibers getting into your whole print system and into your inks and all that stuff where you don't right. need as aggressive a cleaner, then, you know, you can save the money and use the super, the regular, uh, super, super cleaner, cleaner and that's going to work great. And like Seraphin yeah. said, um, the super nozzle cleaner is, is great. Uh, if you, you know, to do a, a reset on your system or if you have an emergency head cleaning, something like, or a head strike, sorry, something like that. Um, but I think, like I said, the most important thing with that is really like how clean your pump and capping station are, because if that's super clean and you're getting a good seal and the cleaner that's in there is actually clean and not contaminated um, with ink, then that's going to be as effective for, uh, for keeping the head from drying out and for breaking down any ink underneath. Sure. I, Eric, I, I hope that that answered your question. Um, I know it wasn't a direct uh, answer, but you know, it, it kind of depends right on how, how you use it. I, sure. No, good. No, I appreciate it. I guess, uh, what I would add to that too is, um, like we don't have the, the plus machines, so we're not running, um, we're not running polys. So depending on what kind of garments you're printing on or even what types of prints you're doing, like if you're running, say you have a job for a day where it's like, a 12 by 15 like solid block and that thing is just like eating so much ink you're at you know three plus dollars a print um, on your ink cost and you're using a lot of white you know that's a great opportunity after a few prints and this kind of goes with the head cleaning as well to have a look underneath of your head and see how much that white ink is building up on there um, and that might be something that you can easily just clear off with a with the head cleaning but if you notice like with this job you're running you're getting a lot of white build up on there then it might be good to use a super nozzle cleaner for like that night. Uh, Cause if you were working it really hard on the whites that day, that's really going to help break down anything that you can see on the bottom of the head. And then anything on the inside level of that film, it'll start to work that out too. Yeah. That's a great advice right there. You know, it's it, at the end of the day, it, it really does. It, what's going to help you is the maintenance of the pump. We don't want to contaminate it. Right. So we want to make sure that those, those uh, sponges are nice and clean when we when we soak it. Uh, so awesome.
Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Not, great question. Um, Thanks. So uh, I want to I want to ask uh, another question to you, uh, Travis. What does your daily maintenance look like? Um, so we came. So we partnered with Omni uh, on this and coming up with kind of a detailed plan, and then we added some of our own things as well. Um, truth be told, our maintenance has not been the best over the years. You know, I don't know how you guys operate, but a long time we were kind of like run until it breaks kind of thing. <laughs> and the more machines you get, the more the run until it breaks mentality does not work uh, and becomes <laughs> a lot more of it's broken than it's running. So right. um, coming up with a, a plan that works uh, and also just for for my end, like overseeing the operations and I do all the the repairs and stuff on site. Um, having something that I can then train new operators on and we have I think about 10 different operators so making sure that everyone's doing the same things so we have our kind of a weekly maintenance sheet set up where every day we have kind of our list of tasks that need to be done for both the opening shift and the second shift as well um, and that looks like uh, like I was describing earlier like in a, a our daily maintenance level is making sure the exterior and interior of the machine are clean um, at the start of each shift, making sure that the uh, pump, wiper blade, and underside of the head are completely clean. Um, doing, a, doing our uh, white ink bottle swirls, making sure that that's clean. Filling up our ink levels. Um, doing any cleaning on the inside of the machine that might be needed. Um, like sometimes you'll get like the kind of like ink mist that might sure. dry on, the, on either the, the waste ink uh, container the spit tray yeah. or the encoder strip or exactly yeah. so doing like a visual check on the machine um, like I said our warehouse there's a lot moving around in there so there's a lot of dust so trying to dust like inside uh, the machine on the rails or like these other parts where we can get the dust build up um, is what helps us and then from there it's it's pretty standard you know we have our we unclip our whites we do our power down unclip the colors um, do our two head cleanings and then uh, do our nozzle check. Um, we do, and this was a, a great thing that Omni suggested for us, uh, print our nozzle check at the start of each shift on a clear like overhead transfer uh, sheet. So that way we have like a visual record of it and our operators will date it and number it based on the machine they're doing. So it helps me when uh, one of my operators or managers come to me and say, hey, the white's whites are dropping on printer number one. I can go through and look through our log and see that, okay, everyone's have been at least checking off that they've been doing the maintenance, but the, the proof is really like that looking at the nozzle check history and seeing, okay, I saw yesterday that white number one was half gone and the day before it was fine and then this morning it was also half gone. So it allows me to kind of see that history and better like chart any potential issues with the machines and really get to them before it becomes like a total a, a total shutdown of the machine, you know, yeah, something that sure. can be like a quick fix. Yeah. And so something I wanted to add to that, and, uh, you know, I, I came up with this with, with a customer a while back. I haven't really shared it with anybody else, really. I haven't done any uh, of the creators live, and I've really been uh, kind of busy with uh, other things. But uh, I know a lot of us might have a spare phone, right, when we upgrade to the new, you know, Samsung 3000 or the iPhone 3 million, whatever we're at now, right? So if you have your spare phone and it still works, one of the suggestions I made to a customer was to use that phone to take pictures of their nozzle check if they don't want to keep paper or trail mm -hmm. or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. So every day they take a picture of their nozzle check, their, their uh, capping station, anything, and they can keep records of that with that, that phone. It's just an idea. It's just something that they use and they liked it and now they've kept up with it so that if they ever do call in or they have questions, they can show us what their nozzle check looked like, you know, three days ago, what it looked like two days ago, last night and or today in the morning, right? So that that way we can kind of get an idea of when this happened and kind of and be, be able to better assist them, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that that's always the best way. We keep records of of what our, our nozzle check looks like. We, it, it'll be a lot easier for our technicians to be able to assist you and get to the, the, the problem, the root of the cause, uh, ultimately uh, a lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, so that leads me to your weekly maintenance, right? So just a little bit, right, about our weekly maintenance and how we process it is making sure that we clean underneath the uh, um, 
the in the um, uh, the nozzle plate. God, I lost it for a second there, right? Making sure that we uh, clean the uh, the nozzle plate and the uh, encoder strip, right? But obviously, like Travis mentioned, he's in an area where there's fans. It's more a lot of fibers out there because of so many shirts. Uh, so I'd like to maybe see if you can share maybe some tips and tricks, something of what you do for for your weekly, I guess, to upkeep. Yeah, I, I guess like those types of things we're pretty much doing like twice a week. Um, and, and again, like part of our, our, our challenge is how do we take care of the maintenance that needs to be done while also maximizing our amount of print time. Sure. So trying to schedule these things on opposite days and opposite shifts so that um, kind of there's an equal balance of operators handling these kind of secondary tasks that you know, may only take five or 10 minutes, but that way it's not one guy who has to do a full hour of all these other secondary cleaning things. So we'll balance it out and usually like Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'll clean the encoder strips. Um, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we'll, uh, you know, do like a good clean on the ink bottles um, or like the, the spit tray fills up pretty fast for us sure. usually like after a week or two <laughs> right. weeks. So once a week we're draining those, making sure those aren't getting too nice. full. Um, so yeah, on, on a weekly maintenance, it's really like those those things there. And same thing, like on our, our maintenance log sheet, we have certain tasks that are kind of highlighted for, all right, this is for a Tuesday morning, this is a Wednesday night task, this is a Thursday morning, so on and so forth, so that we keep it consistent. Um, and obviously with the more machines you have, the harder it is to keep track of that and just mentally sure so, for sure yeah so yeah, having we, a, a log sheet for each machine and you know if you've got one machine it's just as important as if you have 12 or 100 of course um just having a, a schedule so that you're not like i think i cleaned the encoder strip last yep. week <laughs> yeah because the more especially with these things that are really easy and not time consuming these things can prevent damages and spoilage which is huge regardless of your of your business size sure Sure. Yeah. No, that's great stuff, right? So, you know, and and just you know, take what what Travis and I are, are sharing with you, and kind of look at your environment and and uh, see if this is something that that you can implement, right? If do you have a fan next to your machine, right? Uh, and is your uh, are you pre-treating with the the Wagner spray gun? Right. If you're pre-treating with the sp uh, Wagner spray gun and you're right next to the machine where I'm at, right, you know, the, it, is, it does have a little bit of an opening so that pre-treatment is going to get some overspray and eventually find its way into that encoder strip, uh, into the carriage bar, into uh, the, the carriage itself, and maybe even into the, uh, the pump, right, the capping station as it's printing. So you want to make sure uh, that you're keeping an eye on your environments, right, and where, where you have that. So we always suggest 50. 10 to 15 feet away from the, the, the machine, uh, your, your pre-treater, if, if it's an open one, then you want to make sure that, you know, uh, uh, the same thing, you know, if it's an enclosed pre-treatment machine, or DTD, right, obviously then that one you can just keep, you know, not too far from there because it's enclosed, you don't need to worry about any type of overspray. Uh, so yeah, so awesome. Um, and then it brings me to our uh, monthly maintenance. Uh, for you, right? So our monthly maintenance, your monthly maintenance is probably a little different than than uh, what we suggest. It's probably bi-weekly, I would say, maybe. Yeah. Um, so we're ch we're checking like um, for things that can kind of wear out more quickly for us. Like I said, um, the weekly basis is really checking like our spit tank, make sure that it's not too full. Um, what we find we go through a lot faster are the are the soak pads. Sure. Those get pretty wet pretty fast for us. So that's usually like a monthly thing where we're changing those and where I certainly rely on my team too to like point these things out. Because once you start getting ink spills in the machine, then that's you know, the start yeah. of <laughs> bigger problems that are more of a pain in the ass to right, clean. Right, for fix. sure. So for sure. on those things, we can see like, all right, they're starting to get a little soggy, but ink's yeah. not dripping down yet. Let's yeah. go ahead and get these swapped out. So monthly, it's, it's usually that. Um, also like either monthly or quarterly, um, again, kind of depending on warehouse conditions, we're looking at uh, the, the ink bottles, like especially the whites, um, just pouring the white out of that and just seeing, do we have any kind of sediment buildup in here? Are our lines going too far down and touching that and cleaning those as needed, at least checking that to see, because these are things that are, again, easy enough to check on the preventative side that you know might take you five, 10 minutes on the front end of it. But if it causes it all the sludge to go to the head and then you got to 
flush or reverse flush your head, right. and all of a sudden you're yeah. two hours down yeah. the line of fixing it. I'm like, if only I'd only done a <laughs> ten minute fix. So, and, and that was going to be my my next question. You know, how long does you know any of these maintenance take you? You know, do the the grease on the carriage bar, the encoder strip, the capping station, the the uh, nozzle plate, checking the bottles, cleaning the outside. How long do any of these tasks take you normally? Um, on the machine on one. We'll, we'll go yeah, on. like for all those things, maybe ten minutes. Maybe ten uh, minutes. Okay. Yeah. So like when we have, typically one operator is oper is running four machines. So within usually thirty to forty five minutes, they have all four machines running nice. um, with any additional kind of maintenance pieces they need to do. So it's really not that that time consuming and uh, definitely the the more you can do on the front end on the maintenance side of things, the better the better it's going to serve your machines and the cheaper it's going to be for you in the long run. Right, sure. because ultimately, right, are consumable parts, right? Mm -hmm. That that gets us the, the dampers, the ink tube lines, the the, the print head, mm -hmm. uh, the pump, the capping station, the, uh, the, the wet cap system in the back, right? So all those things are consumables that will eventually go out. And I know for you guys, you guys have, you know, every three to... How many months would you say you switch out your your dampers? Um, yeah, I'd say dampers are usually around six months or so. Okay. That really depends on how much I'm connecting and disconnecting them. <laughs> People right. have head strikes and I have right, to right. fix the print heads. Um, <laughs> yeah, like usually for dampers around six months, print heads were, with the maintenance we're at now, we're usually around six to eight months with the, nice. with the print head. It's getting better though. Right. I find the more uh proactive maintenance we're doing and also as soon as we see like any kind of signs of clogging i'm in there doing flushes and stuff right. to uh to get those to get those back um but i i will definitely say like we're seeing a lot better life uh on our parts even though we're running our machines harder than ever um with the with the better maintenance we've been doing and right. the the more the tighter we get on that the the even bigger difference I've seen. Uh, our print heads were what before, like every three months or four months. There was a time, yeah, <laughs> we were chewing through like a print head in yeah, three or four months, and that I, was getting pretty bad. So. I remember, I remember coming out every every few months uh, in uh, switching out on that number three and number eight. Right yeah. There, yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, so you know, it 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 does really, honestly, at the end of the day, your 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 quality, your performance on your machine. Uh, I, we, you know, we've preached it quite a bit. You know, I think we've gone over it multiple times. I just, I really wanted to have our, you know, Travis in here to kind of share some of his tips and tricks and things that they've gone through because it's, it's so important and we can't, we can't uh, stress it enough, right? How important it is to make sure that we upkeep our maintenance. And, and even though, uh, the, the manual says our, our starting point, right, is for this on this weekly, it doesn't mean that it stays like that, right? If you see that it's time that we clean something, uh, it, it can be bi-weekly, your monthly can be every two weeks, uh, and your, your daily procedures can be done uh, twice a day, right? To make sure that we maintain the best uh, quality, right? So. And I, I think to kind of add to that, one thing that's been, well, that we've had problems with before and where we are more and more learning from our ways is like, as your business scales, you'll need to change your procedures and that's fine and that should be expected. You know, we have come to this crossroads several times in printing in other parts of our production where it's just like, well, this is how we've always done it. Why would we do it different now? Right. You know, or this is what we were trained on initially. Yeah. Why isn't it that way forever? But right. as our environments change, as our machine needs change, as the jobs we're running change, like nothing is, is set in stone. And certainly for us and largely what my role is now is really looking at our procedures on a daily, weekly, monthly basis um, and seeing how can we increase our output? How can we increase our efficiency? How can we reduce downtime? How can we improve the lifespan of the parts and things like that? How can we basically get more money out of what we're doing? You right. know, and, um, and that is by constantly reassessing our systems, looking at is the maintenance we're doing enough? Are we keeping track of the maintenance? What's our training procedures like? Are we who are we training on more advanced things and is that useful? So it's challenging, uh, you know, I'm super busy every day <laughs> on the floor doing all yeah. kinds of crazy things, yeah. but like having that mentality of, it doesn't have to stay one way forever. And even print quality wise, like, you know, some days you might see it starting to, your quality might not be as good as the day before, but having logs and having records of your 
machine history can really help you pinpoint like, okay, I was having issues with my whites dropping today. Uh, tomorrow I have the same issue. Tomorrow I have the same issue. Right. And then I have a log, okay, it's three days in a row. I already checked my dampers, they're good. Must be a clog or something in here I can resolve. Mm -hmm. So having that knowledge base, and for us now having knowledge base of 12 machines over years span, and I keep a really detailed log any of any repairs or part changes I'm doing, it helps me really keep track of what the life of these parts are. And it also makes it really easy when I'm, uh, if I'm bringing a machine into service that I can turn it over to one of the techs and say, hey, this is basically what's happened in the last year. I've noticed this issue you know, basically weekly and I've sure. done these fixes and it hasn't resolved it. So it, it saves them a lot of time. We can get our machine back faster. Yeah. And uh, it just keeps things running smoother overall. Yeah, no, I, I you know, that that's, uh, you know, to kind of add to what, what he just said. I mean, it's, it's when he says it's detailed, it's detailed. And not only that, those of you that are the business owners and you, you do have somebody running your machine, right? Or you do hire somebody to, to assist you with, with running your machines. It's always important, right? Travis, you know, holds his team accountable and at high standards, right? And making sure that they they uh, keep up with that. It, it's always a good idea, right, to to run through it uh, yourself, right, to remember uh, what it was like, right, to do it and maybe show them, maybe go back in there and double check and make sure that there's no changes or any any uh, updates that you may need to do uh, change, like he said, right? Uh, he's made so many changes in the past, you know, eight, seven, eight years now that, uh, that it, it, some of you might be uh, scaling and growing right now and it might be that time um, and obviously we're always here to help you guys can call us and we can get on there and figure out what how we can customize something for you obviously with, as you scale uh, higher um, so I'll, I'll open it up again for some uh, any additional questions that we have uh, if there's any of you guys out there that have some questions or we I don't see any on the chat uh, but if you'd like to go ahead and uh, open uh turn on your cameras as i mentioned before i re really like to kind of keep you guys in here and uh and see your guys' faces and if you guys have any questions please uh, go ahead and shoot them this way while we get anybody to, to ask any questions was there anything that you'd like to add maybe something uh you'd like to go over of uh, maybe your 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 uh you know your your maybe a little tips and tricks as you guys were growing, right, from maybe two to three printers and, you know, what, what is something that maybe helped you produce more, more, uh, more, more prints or, or better prints or higher quality prints? What was something that maybe you may have done uh, when you went in, in from, you know, I guess three to, to four printers? Yeah, and, it, it's challenging and, um, like, especially uh, keeping consistency between operators is, can be a challenge. I mean, for any of you guys that have other operators that are running the machine for you, you know, how often do you get someone that comes to you and just says, hey, the machine's broken, and you ask them why, and they said, I don't know, it just broke. Knowing that they may know that they had a head strike or something and they just don't want to be forthcoming about, yeah. um, that can be a challenge, but I think on the, that's where having these logs and like the maintenance check is sure. kind of like the extra research that you can do, whether you're the main or only operator or just you know, entrusting a team to run it for you. Um, in terms of increasing efficiency, uh, a couple of things that we've done is like really look at like our layout, um, like in terms of our warehouse. Nice. So when we have four uh, machines, like I said, one operator is running four machines, um, we have them like lined up one, two, three, four. We've also done it where they've been like kind of front to back and like two like that. Um, I find both work pretty well, um, but ideally kind of the less steps you Physical steps you can take, the better. Um, we're using a conveyor dryer to dry all our shirts. So trying to keep all our machines within the same walking distance to the conveyor dryer helps minimize that, uh, helps minimize those extra steps because um, there is a lot of downtime that can sure. result from that. Of course. A big thing for us too, because we, like most of our production is uh, for kind of repeat clients or our own internal clothing brands and companies. Um, having our files, our print files really well organized um, and labeled correctly too. Oh, we actually yeah. just overhauled all that because for like two of the websites we operate, we have I think like a thousand designs on each. Yeah. And wow. you know, these are designs that have been coming for years. So some of them aren't 
sized correctly. Some of them aren't cropped. Some of them are named the wrong thing. We've sure. changed the name online. So then when you bring a new person in and we're training them, they're like, where's this file? And they say, <laughs> oh, it's in this folder. You'll figure it, You'll out. Like, figure it out. All these things that we just know because we've been doing it for so right, long. Right. Applying that to someone who is is new. It's like, sure. I don't know all these things You're that are basically like insider insider knowledge right you know? right so trying to to look at it especially as you scale like if you have when you have someone come in who has no print experience no idea about your operation or what you do how can you make it as easy as possible for them um to to get these things going and the file setup is certainly where we've seen like a lot of time lost with new operators like searching for files like i said there's thousands of files and there are so many brand folders so sure. we've got it it's increasingly getting more nice. organized with subfolders and making sure that whatever product name we're selling online, that our print file has that same name, that we, if we're selling like a, a white shirt version and a black shirt version, that we have those things off the bat. It also really helps too when you have repeat jobs for maybe it was a client who ordered from you a year ago and they say, hey, I love the shirts I bought last year. I want the exact same thing. And you have this moment like, yeah, oh. I don't know what settings we use. I didn't have the file, like what size we did it at, any adjustments. So keeping the, all those saved and organized makes it easy to say, hey, I got you. I know exactly what we did last time. We're good to go. Yeah. Um, that really helps. That's awesome. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So we have a couple questions come in. Uh -huh. So I have one coming up on a year on my print or any suggestions on a, uh, annual prevention, maintenance, replacement, parts, et cetera. So, yeah, so uh, I think it's a, a TA, right, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one of the suggestions that I will make uh, for you is it's, after the year, um, if, if you're not producing the amount of uh, shirts that Travis's team is, you know, between 60 and 80, obviously they probably do this every couple months, you want to uh, empty out the, the ink bottles, right, and we want to wash them out, make sure they're nice and clean with just warm water. Um, and then maybe go in there, fill them up with distilled water, and then we want to flush out the lines. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that those are nice and clean. Something that parts that you may want to keep in there uh, in, in, on hand is always the support kit, right? That comes with the pump, the eight dampers, the eight ink tube line assemblies, mm -hmm. uh, the O-rings, the, uh, um, the, the copper fittings. Uh, and then it, it wouldn't hurt if you've uh invest on a printhead to have uh in case you know some it, it, it is you're starting to notice drop out uh, it's always a great idea to to have a printhead uh in stock just in case it's that time you know we got to swap it out uh you you call in you put in your ticket and we can assist you in getting that installed uh the same day right opposed to uh, let's take a look at it or let's run through it now you if you already know that it's time we can go ahead and just replace that with you. Um, you know, uh, is there, is this surely, is there a way to get a copy of the checklist? Yes, so we do have one, uh, it's an Omniprint one. I can send that over, I can add it so that everybody can get it. Uh, that would be, uh, that's uh, honestly a great question. Like I said, uh, they have, they've tweaked theirs to, to fit their own and we encourage you to do the same. So I'll send you over uh, the, uh, the checklist that we have for daily, weekly, monthly. Uh, and then quarterly things that you may want to change out uh, every six months and then obviously the year what we just kind of uh, uh, went over um, uh, Surely the company that I work for is called Marzuno. It's M-A-R-S-U-N-O uh, You can see us at Marzuno.com um, and I believe on Instagram as Marzuno Creative um, But uh, yeah, that's all the stuff about that. I think you raised a good point Seraphine it can be hard, especially when you're starting out to like have money sitting in parts you're not using, but it's, cru it's crucial, especially as you scale. Like for us now, like I keep a ton of extra everything, minus printheads, because right. that's, I don't want to yeah. have a bank yeah. of, I don't right. have 20 grand of printheads <laughs> sitting on the shelf. Um, but I always have like one new one sitting there and then all my uh, extra cleaners and stuff, because it sucks when you're like under the gun with a rush job and there's like, literally no time to waste and something goes out in your machine and you know i have the luxury of driving five minutes sure. to come to omniprint and get something if i need to at the 11th hour right but uh you know i didn't always have that luxury and even now i always keep extra parts so that if it's if it's a quick fix that that i can do 
or that I have an Omnitech walk me through, yeah. it's easy. I can get it done quickly and get up and running again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and so that that's great. You know, um, I've got a question here. What uh, what clear paper did you say you? So if you guys remember, those of you that are old as I am, uh, when we were into school, the the transparent sheets that they would put for the overhead projector to show us how to kind of do math and all that good stuff those clear sheets that you can get at uh, office depot staples mm -hmm. uh th those are the sheets that we're talking about because they're clear right so you you sit it at the edge of the platen it prints the nozzle check you can just lift it look at it and you get an actual look right mm -hmm. so we started always with printing at the top of the nozzle plate but as time develops right we we put pre-treatment on the shirts, you know, we paint, we we're, we're forget to wipe down the nozzle check, uh, and it just starts to get a little harder and harder for you to see. But yeah, the transparent sheets are usually the ones that work the best for you to be able to kind of yeah. just raise it and, and uh, get a good nozzle check. So, yeah. And you can even clean those off and reuse them too if you yeah. really want. So Correct. Yeah. And if, a... yeah, exactly. So, you know, if, if you just, uh, if, if you use that phone that I told you, that backup phone, you take a picture of it, you have it on the date and all that good stuff, you just wipe it down and reuse it. Or in that same sheet, they're usually eight by 11, mm -hmm. right? So you can kind of keep going a little further down then rotate yep. it and then put a, a date next to it. Same thing, right? And then sideways and all that good stuff. I think For you sure, could yeah. get... Uh, honestly, uh, I think a week of, uh, of, of nozzle checks on one side and then you can flip it over again. You know that, you know, it's white, 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 white and then CMYK. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, you know which one uh, is which side and always date the, the side of it so that that way you always have that, you know, record keeping. You know, one of the things that, that Travis brought today, you know, record keeping of your machine and maintenance and what you what do you what you do on a on a daily basis and then you know making sure that the people or the the, the operator that you have running the machine is you know um uh, uh, knowledgeable right and and if and if you need that additional uh training or additional one-on-one -on -one or uh even the technical side of things right where you know, uh, we, we had Marsuno come in and spend, you know, I think a week or two, right? We, we had um, somebody come and spend some time out here in our uh, repair center to kind of see the process and how that works. And uh, that's also something that we can offer you guys if you're interested, right? Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's always good to have uh, the maintenance and to have some parts. Uh, some spare parts, but uh, and that checklist, right? Always that 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 yeah. checklist is very very important. So. Oh, the other thing on the annual maintenance, there's obviously parts of the machine that are very difficult to clean, like getting inside here. Oh, you know, yeah. you, unless you have a very tiny hand, you can't reach all the way to the bottom. You get a lot of dust in there. Um, if you're ambitious, you can strip the whole thing down to the skeleton, which the first time I did it was really terrifying. But as I've done with learning all these things, watching an Omnitech do it, and then. <laughs> take photos when you're yeah. doing it yourself take photo of how it looked before especially if you have one machine sure and because then you can just reverse go through it and see like where did that screw go <laughs> um but uh getting a like one of those small vacuums um so that you can get a hose like a small hose inside of here to vacuum out the the dust in those uh in those channels same thing like behind the gantry um and like a lot of the plates are really easy to take off so like this front cover is really easy to take off. Same thing at the back behind the gantry. And that's where you're going to get a lot of dust buildup and ink buildup that can, over time, as we see, like within six months, start blocking your front and back sensors and things like that. Or you're at the back underneath the sensor that uh, stops it from going up or down. Mm -hmm. So things like that where you're like, I'm pressing the up button, nothing's happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, so a mini vacuum can be great to, to reach in those areas where you can't get into. Um, and that's something that, probably on an annual basis you'd want to do. But again, like if you're, if you got Oz in your machine, just keeping uh, an eye on when it gets dirty and uh, just getting there and back. Yeah. That, that's, you know, one of the things he, you know, that Travis says, yeah, you know, clean in here. Uh, I can't tell you how many different things we found in uh, printers that have been sent to us because, you know, we can't figure out over the phone and it's difficult to see inside and, and obviously some, you know, customers will call us from your computer and it's very difficult to angle it, you know. And so we've started using uh, the Zoom method, right, where, where you guys and, and a lot of suggestions that we've made is, you know, go buy that $10 tripod, have that for your phone if you're going to call us and it makes it a lot easier for you guys to show us 
right? Uh, but yeah, we've, we've gotten machines with pens, with money in it, yeah. with uh, uh, ink, uh, I think a, a, a baby's toy once. Yeah. Uh, we, we got some stories of some of the stuff that we've pulled out of some of the machines. It's just, you know, people have just forgotten it. But if you do see it, like Travis said, right, you see that it's, that it's time to clean it. You know, even one of those dust... Uh, uh, like a Swiffer. Yeah, like a Swiffer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a Swiffer. You know, you can fit it right there in the middle. Only thing, the one thing that I will definitely say is make sure that you're you're careful, right? There are some cables down there. Yeah. There are sensors. Uh, there are a few things in there that you, you want to be very careful with because uh, you can unplug them or tear them or rip them and then end up causing uh, other issues, right? So you just carefully do it. You shouldn't have a problem if you're just being careful with it. Even with the vacuum, right? With a small hose that you can get in there with, if you're just watching it and making sure that you're careful, you'd be fine, right? So. The, the microfiber dust cloths work really well too. Yeah. We usually yeah. order ours from Uline. Yeah. We just get a box of them and uh, that's great and easy too for our operators to not have to be messing around with paper towels and making it wet and getting water near the machines. It's like yeah. the microfiber cloths can just get out the, all the dust off and then um, we use alcohol a lot in like cleaning the exterior of the machine. If you have ink that won't come off, we're using the microfiber egg with some alcohol to take most of the most of the things off or you get stubborn stuff on your platen or uh, in these internal panels. It's a, it's a quick clean and keeps things looking great. Don't look too closely at our machines. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but they are, general, yeah. a lot of them are, you know, eight, seven years old. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll have last call for questions. Uh, if, uh, if you guys, if anybody has any other additional questions, I don't see any in the chat. I don't see anybody popping up. It was actually really nice to, you know, to host this again. I haven't been on one of these in, in a while, so it was nice to be on with you guys. And thank you, Travis, for joining us. Yeah, sure. um, I don't see any additional questions. So um, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Remember, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. we're here and uh, we'll try and do more of these where we, we can have other customers uh, c come on and, and, you know, show us a little bit of tips and, and tricks and what they do. And you know, I, I know you're a super busy guy. I know you've been probably trying to get out of here for the past 30 minutes. Uh, sorry, I know I told you about 20 minutes, but I, I, I took you, you helped me take the, the entire uh, hour. So, uh, I'm passionate thank, about yeah, it, bro. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, thank you, Travis, yeah, for, for sure, coming sir, in, always. my friend. Uh, you guys all take care, and uh, we'll see you guys next week.